Ah, the Game Boy Advance. The long-awaited sequel to the original Game Boy, saying this 32-bit handheld had quite the shoes to fill would be a massive understatement. Despite not having any kind of spec upgrade as we can see in the Game Boy Color, DSi, and new 3DS models, the Game Boy Advance went through radical redesigns that led to it outshining the original Game Boy line in almost every category. E.G., I'm reviewing older handhelds again that you probably don't like all that much. You better come out and contradict me. Hey, keep it down. I'm listening to some GBA soundtracks. Are you doing some research for the retrospective? I'm kind of already making it, like, right now. I'm sort of stuck on the Game Boy Advance's audio. It's so crunchy. I can't tell if I'm hearing a trumpet or a coffee maker. So I guess the joke here is that you can't stand the sound, and therefore the Game Boy Advance deserves to be thrown into the dumpster fire of forgotten video game history. Do I have that about right? What are you, crazy? This is fantastic! I love lo-fi stuff like this! I don't know how I didn't see that one coming. Unlike the DS, I did own the Game Boy Advance back during its heyday. I was in my late teens and although I didn't pick it up right away, once I did, I never once turned back to play the Game Boy Color. It was just such a huge improvement over what the Game Boy was capable of the difference between these generations was even more striking than going from the NES to the Super NES. That's not to say that the Game Boy Advance wasn't without its growing pains. In their search for improvements, Nintendo ended up releasing three different GBA models. We'll of course be covering all three of these models throughout the hardware retrospective, with today's video focusing on the differences as you go from one model to the next. Released in 2001 around the world, the Game Boy Advance was the 32-bit successor to the Game Boy. To start off, I'll be comparing the Game Boy Advance with the Game Boy Color model, since it was the last model released before the GBA launched. The Game Boy Advance uses the same kind of reflective TFT LCD screen used in the Game Boy Color and still uses a singular mono speaker. The cartridges, which are physically about half the size of original Game Boy cartridges, still insert in the back along the top right behind the screen. And those old Game Boy games all work on the Game Boy Advance! It's honestly one of my favorite features of the GBA. The power switch, volume wheel, and headphone jack all look to be exactly the same, and despite being so much more powerful, the Game Boy Advance only requires two AA batteries. What's new on the GBA? Well, obviously the Game Boy Advance has a new landscape layout, as opposed to the portrait orientation of the original Game Boy line. This design always confused me since this is the very same layout used by the Sega Game Gear, Atari Lynx, and even the Tiger Gamecom, which all competed directly with the Game Boy the previous decade. The screen size has been increased from 2.3 to 2.9 inches, while the resolution has been bumped from 160 by 144 to 240 by 160, as well as a change to a widescreen 3 by 2 aspect ratio from the tall 10 by 9 ratio on the original Game Boy. For controls, Nintendo added two additional buttons in the form of L and R shoulder buttons. For multiplayer and other communication features, we still have a port for a cable that does have a different shape, but will still accommodate that slim link cable used by the Game Boy Pocket and Color, but a completely new cable will be necessary for GBA games. The odd thing missing here from this original Game Boy Advance model is any kind of power port, a feature that dates back to the original gray brick Game Boy. It strictly runs on batteries and nothing else, and I must admit it's something I only recently noticed. The original Game Boy had to wait around for seven years until we would see the first redesign in the Game Boy Pocket, 
but the Game Boy Advance only had to wait for two years for the SP model to come around. There are technically two different models for the GBA SP with really only one difference between them, so we'll of course have to cover that. The Game Boy Advance SP arrived in 2003 and brought with it a multitude of changes. The clamshell design that the DS was known for started with this model, an engineering decision that not only made the SP far smaller when folded shut, but also kept the screen and controls well protected. When open, the Game Boy Advance SP looks more like the classic Game Boy line with its portrait layout. One of the new features that the GBA really needed was the addition of a front-lit screen, known as model AGS-001. A couple years later, Nintendo released the AGS-101, a Game Boy Advance SP with a backlight instead of a front light. This is the model shown here, and the easy way to tell the two different models apart is the way the screen appears when the units are off. The 001 screen looks silver and very reflective, while the 101 screen is black. Just above the controls is a button which toggles the light on and off in the frontlit SP, while the button switches between two separate brightness settings for the backlit SP. The volume control is now a slider instead of a wheel, and the shoulder buttons are much smaller. The cartridge slot is now on the bottom instead of the top, where it has been for the last four Game Boy models, and we now have a charging port. For the rechargeable battery, another headline feature of the SP. Just below the power on LED, there is a new charging LED which glows orange. I've never known why, but the Game Boy Advance SP is completely missing a standard headphone audio jack. You can use an adapter that plugs into the charging port, meaning you can't use headphones while charging the SP. Finally, we have the Game Boy Micro, with the name oddly missing the word Advance despite this being a Game Boy Advance model. It was released in 2005, after the DS had released, and as such only shipped just shy of two and a half million units, meaning it's the rarest Game Boy Advance out there. As the smallest handheld video game device ever released by Nintendo, the clamshell design of the SP has been dropped in favor of a landscape layout like the original GBA, and the Micro Sports interchangeable faceplates. The screen is incredibly small, even beating the Game Boy Color in this category with a 2-inch screen, and the brightness can be adjusted with five different presets. On the controls, the start and select buttons light up to indicate the charge level of the battery, and the L and R buttons have increased in size to be very similar to the original GBA shoulder buttons. Up top is a new charging port that is exclusive to the Micro, and we see the return of one of my favorite features of all time, the carry strap attachment. The volume controls are once again changed to a rocker, and the headphone jack makes a welcome return. There is no communication port per se for multiplayer, but you can get a Game Boy Micro exclusive link cable that plugs into the charging port which requires an adapter if you want to play with other Game Boy Advance models. The Micro only plays Game Boy Advance games. There is no backwards compatibility with Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. It is also not compatible with other Game Boy Advance accessories, such as the e-reader and the GBA to GameCube cable. Maybe that's why they left out Advance from the title. That's it for part one of the Game Boy Advance Hardware Retrospective. I love the Game Boy Advance, and it's easy to look back on these different models with an admiration for Nintendo's design philosophies. The hands-on deep dive is up next, where we'll really get into each and every feature these different models have to offer, so be on the lookout. This is Steven with Level One Sword, and I'll see you all then. Hey, thanks for watching! If you want to keep on top of the videos, definitely take a sec to subscribe. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon if you want to follow me across the internet. Level One Sword also has a bi-weekly podcast, so give it a listen!